What's the worst thing you've seen in Iraq? Well, okay, now, it's not... It's, okay, so we used to come back um, to our hotel after our different runs, and, uh, again, this is in the book, and it's, it's something that sort of is always with me. Um, let me see. I just have to slow down here because I can feel emotions. Yeah. Emotions are good. Yeah. Anyway, there was this kid. He was uh, maybe nine or ten, same age as um, same age as my kids, and um, I always wondered why he was hanging out <clears throat> in this burnt out, bombed out building. And um, so I asked one of the guards one day. And he always reminded me of Gollum from Lord of the Rings, right? Fuck me. And um, I used to ask, you know, I used to, we'd try and feed him, we'd give him food, but he, would, he was fucking filthy and dirty ass. And then he um, would scamper back into the uh, into the ruins and he would never eat anything that we gave him. And um, so then I, uh, he went to one of the guards and I said, so why is that, that kid always there? You know, where's his family? What the fuck is he doing? And why is he always hanging out in that fucking bombed out car park? And the guy said, oh, no, 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 that's not a, it's not a car park. That used to be his house, his apartment block. It got blown up with a bomb one day. You know, fuck knows why it got blown up, but it, it did. And his family are dead, and they're still in there. Plus every other family that lived in that apartment block. And so every night he comes out, and he, uh, you know, and this night that I saw him, he had a, what I thought was a loaf of bread. But it wasn't. It was a dead pigeon, and it was plucking, and he was eating it. And he looked exactly like fucking Gollum. And then he scampered back off into the uh, into the um, rubble. And you know, I, I thought about my kids at home who are exact same age. And I was going, well, that kid's fucked. You know, that he's never going to be the same. And for the, some reason, that always played on my mind. You know, that this fucking thing is just a complete waste of time. You know, it's just absolute destruction for greed. It's absolute destruction for for money. And this is the result of it, you know. And... This is going to come back and bite everybody in the ass one day, because if this had happened in my country or in your country, and of course I'd form and I'd end, I'd be in a decision myself, because all you want is revenge. Yeah, once you see that, like you say, with your two friends being killed and tortured, and you then hating every Iraqi, yeah. they're there doing what they feel as if as a noble thing, as protecting their own. Because of what the Americans done. Exactly right. So both think they're in the right. You're in, you think they're in the right by hating every Iraqi. The Iraqis, and probably if you sway towards it, the Iraqis are the ones in the right. They're the thing. Because I don't agree with wars, but if someone came to Scotland to try and invade it, I'm the first one to grab a fucking rifle and try and protect my family. Yeah. By all means necessary. Mm. And my job is to pre provide and protect by all fucking means, and whether that's killing or taking life, I don't give a fuck what it is. It's just a natural instinct is to protect. You don't want to ever go down that route. But once you start going down that route and start thinking like that, as soon as you start seeing destruction, like you said, the stuff that you've seen in your life, you have to die with it. I don't know how, because what is the old saying? They say time is a healer, but it's never the true case because you adapt to the pain. You mm -hmm. learn to fucking live with it. Mm -hmm. but by my own pain and misery in life, I, I still struggle with it. No matter how much I exercise or run or no matter how much shit I eat or no matter what I do or how busy I am at work, here, still pain. No matter if I'm having a good day, it'll remind us, well, wait a minute, look how the fuck-ups that you've done, look at the shit that you've seen. And it reminds me that I shouldn't be happy and I don't ever fucking think I'll get over it. And that's the sad reality of life. No matter what you do, no matter how you try and overcome it, no matter if you do therapy, yes, it heals it a little, but it fucking scars the heart or the soul or whatever it does when you see destruction.